The journey of water starts 4.6 billion years ago, during the formation of our solar system. A vast cloud of dust and gas hangs in space, inside of which is an abundance of hydrogen and oxygen atoms, which proliferate. Over millions of years, these highly reactive atoms bind together to form H2O, or what is chemically water. The newly formed water sticks to dust grains to build ice crystals, which eventually become so dense that it starts to collapse under gravity. As the Earth cooled, rocks and crust reacted with chemicals in the early atmosphere to create water molecules. 97% of the Earth's water is in the oceans. Only 3% is fresh water, of which 2% is locked in glaciers, ice caps and groundwater. That leaves us with just 1% of the Earth's water that is accessible and usable by humans. The widely ignored issue of climate change, however, is disrupting the proper balance of Earth's waters, as the both are inextricably linked. As the global population grows, so does the demand for water, which depletes natural resources and damages the environment in many places. Morning Reads reached out to Professor AKM Saiful Islam, who's working at the Institute of Water and Flood Management of Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, BUET, since 1997. He also currently serves as the coordinator of the climate change study cell of BUET. Climate change issue has been um, vast around the world since 1990s, when scientists discovered that the global temperature is increasing surface temperature and this increase actually continue because the main fact is the greenhouse gas emission. Since industrialization 1750, we are um, emitting more greenhouse gas that uh, actually come back to the earth. So the net emission is continuously rising. In, in 1750, it was about 280 parts per million. But now it's around 415 parts per million. So how, what actually this greenhouse gas do? This greenhouse gas is radiatively act uh, with the uh, energy emitting outside the wall. And those energy they absorb and then they increase their temperature. Like the way in the cold countries which uh, uh, produces crop with the greenhouses. So this greenhouse gas from industrialization, from uh, vehicle movement, from many other activities, land burning of fossil fuel, we are actually emitting more and more greenhouse gases than that actually captured by the earth. So what climate change really means, that the mean state of the climate actually changing and it actually changes the weather pattern that we are currently observing. For example, the whole Earth temperature is now about one degree more warmer than the past. And more importantly, this warming actually uh, melting the ice. And those ice melt and thermal expansion actually increase the sea level, which we often refer to as a sea level rise. And as a country like Bangladesh, which has a very flat delta, its elevation varies from 0 to 5 meter, which actually be a big problem because not only salinity, it, uh, sea level rise, but also salinity issues will be impacted in the coastal area. And many other natural disasters around the world. We recently see that in the Australia there is a bushfire. We also see the unprecedented, unexpected kind of storms which uh, more than category 5, which we call super cyclones. And those are uh, more frequent, more intense. So, and many other ways, the weather pattern is changing and continuously changing because of this industrialization and so much greenhouse gas we are emitting to the atmosphere. The whole term actually referred to climate change. Now we actually call climate emergency because if we are not act now, it will actually cause serious problems to the atmosphere and to the earth. In Bangladesh, climate change will impact many different ways. For example, we have a very vulnerable po coastal population which are facing sea level rise. And not only sea level rise, storms, 
a cyclone we called and also salinity issues so all this make the coastal uh, people more vulnerable than the, they are right now as you know bangladesh is in the list of top 10 climate vulnerable countries and in other part like north north central part we are experiencing monsoon flood every 2 3 years we are experiencing big flood so this climate change will impact the hydrologic cycle as you know and in south asia projections is the monsoon flood will be more intense more frequent and we are experiencing more um, devastating floods in the future if global warming will continue like this so we are assumed that the global warming will not be like that because that will impact many different areas in bangladesh another part is not this which is very unique geography as you know uh, we call it a haur area in haur region they are uh, experiencing flash flood every uh, flash flood season actually begins from march to may which is before monsoon we call it pre monsoon season and pre monsoon season if flash flood occur before the harvesting of the boro rice crop that causes devastation that cause uh, many damage of the crop that actually the main crop of the area so in future the monsoon and pre monsoon rainfall would increase that will cause more and more flash flood chances will be high and the damage would be more and also interestingly in the western part of the country we have also some areas which is drought prone we call barind area so in future a study of the buet we found that the barind and other western part of the country particularly the northwestern part of the country will face moderate kind of drought as you know that bangladesh has a huge number of population which need a, a num number of cases we need lot of water for domestic use for uh, inter industrial use for irrigation purposes so to meet the demand of the food security we need water so water stress will be in future another challenge bangladesh will face so if you consider all these bangladesh is very vulnerable to climate change and then and the stress will be more and more if we emit greenhouse gas the way we are currently doing Bangladesh already prepared an strategy and action plan in 2009 which actually government is now updating on the other hand government also prepared a plan which is called data plan to address the issues of the delta uh, last year so all this planning and policy level actions is already done but now making planning to the action and programs is another challenge so the bangladesh is not a big emitter as you know so well, the main challenge in bangladesh is facing different vulnerabilities which actually be increased by the climate change and so adaptation is the main uh, actually activity in bangladesh has to be going through or uh, bangladesh has to be followed in the adaptive part so <clears throat> we also follow the low carbon economy which is uh, from fossil fuel economy to low carbon economy government already uh, had been uh, very much eager to transfer this you can see many different activities we, we are taking but uh, adaptation has a limit so if you consider that uh, bangladesh will adapt and greenhouse gas continue to emit by the developed countries which are now they are doing so that will be a problem so we must have to let other know that bangladesh and other vulnerable country will be more vulnerable if we not reduce in greenhouse gas and the paris agreement that has been signed in 2015 all the parties which agreed that greenhouse gas emission will be just that by 2100 uh, we are have limiting the global warming below 2 degree and effort should made to make it below 1.5 degree so all this uh, appeal actually to the developed country that please reduce greenhouse gas but for challenge of bangladesh we have to adapt and there's various sector adaptation needs to be done particularly the agriculture sector the infrastructure the food uh, security and also the um, industrial section and also like uh, health sector we need adaptation
it is now time that we point out and prioritize on our climate change goals. Restoring the world's ecosystems could make it happen. The Earth knows how to regulate itself and has maintained a balance that has sustained life for billions of years. But humans have tipped off that balance by destroying ecosystems. What is it that we can now do to help fight climate change? Actually, the industries first, they have to go through that, uh, their energy source. Source should be greenhouse gas emission less uh, low carbon source. For example, they should depend on the energy that supply from uh, renewable sources, uh, from uh, solar, from other, uh, like uh, from air, uh, so from wind energy, from the water energy. So those renewable energy source they should use so that they can really, they are not become a big emitter of the biggest gas. Secondly, they are going to face the water stress because the quantity of water will be less, particularly in the dry, dry season. And then they also face the challenge of the uh, wrong quality type of water. For example, salinity will be increased. That will impact many industries. And particularly industrial zones in Chittagong city, that will face the groundwater depletion. So they have to move from groundwater to alternative source, which is the surface water. So treatment cost will be uh, more in the future. Apart from that, industry also have the responsibility to not to pollute the environment. For example, wastewater, they have to treat before um, discharge to the, the uh, freshwater bodies. And they have to, uh, they also have to follow the regulations, environmental regulations. And I am very happy to know many industries actually recycle the water. This is very important, so we don't put much much stress on the groundwater or surface water bodies. So industries has many challenges. Industry have to comply with the Paris Agreement. Industry has to comply with the environmental rules and regulations in Bangladesh. So all these actually environment, environmental awareness in the industries, we need to let them know. Water is essential to humankind, to our health, to our communities, and to our industry. Steel manufacturing is one of the world's largest water-consuming industries. Here's what Mr. Abu Saim Chowdhury, Deputy Managing Director of Bides at Steel, had to say about the usage, reservation, and recycling of water in one of the pioneering steel plants in the country. Uh, water is uh, very essential for the steel industry because it plays a major part in terms of steel making, in terms of the machineries that we use. Because um, as you know, the steel industry, it deals with uh, high temperature for production. So all the machineries, it needs constant cooling. And then end of the day, the uh, main product that we make in our case, the QST steel, uh, we have to use water in order to uh, get the surface tempered and to have a perfect balance in terms of strength and flexibility. Well, the steel industry is uh, one of the highest water consuming industry in the world. And uh, like any industry, um, the amount of water depends on uh, the kind of usage that we have. Uh, at Baize Steel, we use roughly about 5,000 liters of water per day. The source of the water that we use at Baize Steel is mainly groundwater and also we do rainwater harvesting. Though our primary objective is to reduce water wastage and to maximize water recycling. We at Baize Steel, we have an international standard state-of-the-art water treatment plant, which the primary use of is to soften the water and to maximize water recycling and reduction of water wastage. We are conscious about the climate change and also the kind of effect that the industries are having all over the world. We at Bayes Steel, we try to do our little best and try to mitigate all the factors that we can in order to reduce the effects on the climate change. Because we believe that uh, every little natural resources that we can save, we are, will, be, um, will be adding some benefit for the future generation, for the country and for the earth. The consequences for nature and humanity are sweeping and severe. We need to take immediate and drastic actions to cut emissions right now. At stake is the health of our ecosystem, wildlife, and importantly, the world we leave for our future generations. 
Scientists say that the world is in a race against time to combat climate change, and we need more actions from each and every one of us to mitigate the situation before it gets worse.